raspberry leaves, which is all around herb used for women's uh, disorders. It's also good for the prostrate. It's also good for children. It's also good for colds in children. These herbs are not just limited to what I'm saying. They cover a broad spectrum. But red raspberry leaves are used primarily as the all-in-all herb for the female system. It helps lessen the pain of uh, birth. It helps strengthen the uterus. It helps with the milk. Then we get into the supplement, the uh, allotone, which I told you is derived from comfrey and curins, which has the, um, what you call gamelanic acid in it, uh, curins, which is a type of a raisin. And all grapes, especially red grapes, are good for stimulating the pineal gland. And the bioflavonoids, which are used to help stabilize the tissue. Some people use that for hemorrhoids or varicose veins. Uh, lecithin is good for varicose veins, too. So is... Uh, uh, chromium for cholinate, by the way. Then we're back to even primrose capsules and the folic acid, which is good for stimulating the hair, the follicles. And remember, the follicles is nothing more than melanin. So it's good at stimulating the melanin, the follicle, folic acid. And B6, which helps transmit the nervous messages. Because the nervous message between the brain and the reproductive system gets kind of like damaged by junk and irritants and synthetic food. So now we've got to stabilize the nerves. Vitamin B6 is also good for what the people call today copper tunnel syndrome. Calcium and magnesium. That's good for stabilizing the nervous system, stabilizing the protein in the body. Because African people don't require as much protein as Europeans. And we stabilize our protein with vitamin D, vitamin K, calciums, calciums and magnesiums. Because calciums come in a complex. Like you have a B complex, you have about eight different types of calciums. But you can't get all of those in supplements. You can only get those when you eat properly. You get the right calciums. But we're just isolating one calcium and one magnesium here. And zinc, which is good for all infections colds, flus, it's good for anorexia nervosa, people who just stop eating, who lose their appetite. You can regenerate the appetite by using zinc. And we have kelp, which is used for electrolytes, which is minerals that carry electricity. We call those electrolytes. And they sell a cheap form of electrolytes today. We call it a sodium chloride. And they put that in Gatorade and say, you got electrolytes. And then phenylalanine, which is good for suppressing the appetite, is also good for depression. It's also used with hyperactive children as well. And melatonin, which today is used to help stimulate and enhance the melatonin in your body, and it's used for sleeping and liquid melatonin is sometimes used with hyperactive children. You have to give them a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the evening, to keep them off the Ritalin. And organic iron. The problem with taking synthetic iron is that it's constipated. It's constipating and it constipates. It is in a form that the body cannot use. The minerals have to be wrapped inside of a live tissue of a plant. All minerals are inorganic and the body cannot digest them. So the body can only use the minerals when they're in a collodial form, as the Europeans call it today, when they're wrapped around a plant or inside of a plant, chelated, as they say sometimes, meaning that chelate means claw, meaning that it's a plant wrapped around it the inorganic mineral, which we call enzymes. Enzymes are hormones, hormones are vitamins. They're all the same. It's just when the activity goes this way, we call it enzyme. When the activity goes that way, we call it a hormone. When it goes this way, we call it a vitamin. So a lot of times you get confused in all of these things. But on the science side, the people in the science know, but they just tell the public anything, and y'all go for these things. It's just a change in the behavior that gives us a change of name, vitamin, hormone enzyme. Just like if you change your behavior, they call you a thief, they call you an honest person, they call you a nice person. You're the same person, but if you change your behavior, they change your title. It's the same with the nutrients. So don't get all lost with it. Then we have uh, the herbs that are used for premenstrual syndrome. You see the ones for uterine bleeding. We have to stop the bleeding. Usually I use vitamin K straight away. I have to stop the bleeding first before I do anything. And that requires at least 10 of those vitamin K tablets, sometimes 10 a day, sometimes 10 three times a day. The objective is to stop the bleeding. I rely a lot on vitamin K and comfrey for that. <clears throat> comfrey is the herb with the allotone in it, as I mentioned before, that's used to stop the bleeding. And then you can see the herbs that are used for premenstrual syndrome and menstruation to increase it or decrease it. 
Some ladies like to bring on cellular hemorrhaging because they were taught that uh, menstruation is necessary. Menstruation is a loss between uh, three and five tablespoons of blood, between four and six tablespoons of blood in Europeans. And uh, menstruation consists of those four to six tablespoons of blood, some cellular debris, and some mucus. It's all mixed together, and it's not all blood. Uh, usually bright red blood is an indication of carbohydrates. Dark red blood is usually indicating fats and protein. Blood with a smell is usually protein. So you can tell by the color of the blood, it's where what is going on in the system, whether it's from the pancreas and the spleen, or whether it's from the liver, or which organ is involved in this disease process. If it's clotting, then you know that it's being held in the system. It's not coming out in clumps, it's just clots. It stays in one spot and then it comes out. But a lot of times ladies think they're passing clots, but it's clots in one spot, then it passes out. There's just a lot of misconceptions about the reproductive system because it's exploited and people make a lot of money off of it hysterectomies, PMS, aspirin, Tylenol, Midol. It's a lot of money to be made off the system. Tampons cause tumors and cysts. And I have the remedies that are commonly used for these illnesses. There's a yeast-like fungus. It's called Candidus albicans. Let me move this over some so you can see it. Those are standard herbs used for that. Uh, Portiaco is the main one that's used today for that. Uh, it will get rid of the uh, Candidus uh, yeast infection, as it's called, which is actually a fungus infection. Fungus is an indication, of course, of using antibiotics or using a lot of processed carbohydrates. So that's white sugar, bleach white flour. Fungus is also an indication of being hypersex, so just focusing on a lot of sex. That's why you find a lot of fungus infection in men, like athlete's foot or jock itch or jock rot, as they call it a fungus infection. Now I'm going to move down to the one that involves tumors since that's the one that's the crisis in the black community with African women. Fibroid tumors. As I mentioned before, it's not the size, it's the location that presents the problem of the fibroids. I usually use a combination of these herbs here. Sheep sorrel, burdock, dandelion, red clover, saw palmetto, echinacea, golden seal, chickweed, uh, and I use St. John's wort for the depression that diseases cause. People get very burnt out from concentrating on the disease process. It's very draining to concentrate on the disease. It's very draining to even talk about it. You're just simply talking about your illness can just give birth to those emotions and feelings, and those emotions and feelings can burn you out, drain you of energy. So I use the St. John's Ward just to nourish the nervous system. And I use these herbs, actually all of them in combination, not just one, all of them. That's when I'm being very aggressive with the treatment. All of them are used in equal parts, and I add usually a uh, female herb of some sort with that formula to increase the blood supply to the pelvic girdle. That would be a red raspberry or chase tree berries. I lean more toward chase tree berries because it's a berry from African tree to chase tree. But I usually use a uh, female herb in combination with all the herbs here to help focus the blood supply to the pelvic girdle. And these supplements are used, zinc in particular, because it has a healing quality and lecithin and chorelic and coenzyme Q10. Um, vitamin A, which is good for infections, ear, ear infections, and all types of infections, uh, along with zinc. And I use also lysine, which is a amino, amino acid that's used for infections, and herpes, and all sorts of kind of diseases of that sort. But the main purpose is to reestablish the healthy environment for the tissue. And that requires changing the diet. I'll show you the herbs that are used for menopause. Blessed thistle, false unicorn, squabine. Squaw is the European word for pussy. And they call African women by this name. It's a very degrading name to call African woman. 
uh, African uh, native, which, the, which we call the Cahutis and the Jamases. These are Africans that came over before Columbus who taught the Native Americans all this dressing and music in the high-rise apartment buildings and the pyramids. These are Africans that came over. So I was saying Africans to be historically correct, but we associate them as Native, Native Americans. They're called Tar Heels, Brass Ankles, Blackfoot. So those are Africans who lived here in America before Columbus, long before the Native Americans, who you call Indians, and taught them a lot of things. The dancing, the drum rhythms, and all these things that we associate with Native Americans are actually African. Just like you associate the Moors who brought this music into Spain that you call Latin. That's African music. The Moors brought it in. But a lot of our things are just taken away from us. Now I'm going back to, to claim them so we know what we're about and have more strength. So this is a negative term, the squaw vine, for uh, Native American women. But we still use it. Because the Europeans control the herb market. Merck controls the vitamin C market. The Japanese control the amino acid market. Squaw vine, the dunkwa, the black cohosh, the red raspberry, and the chase tree berries, as you 